it's a video of you celebrating in 2015 that Jonathan left power and that you came to uh, Abuja, you left the United States to come to Nigeria to mm. participate at the inauguration of Buhari. I'm sure you have seen that particular video. Mm. Uh, what were you doing in that video? Well, in 2015, so that you get it very clear, I wasn't even a registered voter in Nigeria. I registered to vote in the first time 2018 when I was running. I lived in the U.S. for 20 years. But most of that time, I had uh, operated as a reporter. So the video that uh, you're probably referring to was when I arrived the headquarters of the Buhari campaign after Jonathan had considered we were coming from INEC. I was covering the announcement of results at INEC. While we were at INEC, Jonathan considered, not, not so rare right now, Jonathan called Buhari. I don't have Buhari's phone number. Jonathan has his phone number. Called Buhari and said, I am no longer convinced that I can win this election. At that point, while we were at INEC, they had not even gone past 60% of the announcements of results. Jonathan called Buhari and we were notified at the event that Buhari is likely to come to his campaign headquarters as a reporter. I was reporting. But on that day, Sahara reporters had, like never done before in the history of Nigeria, had stated clearly based on the facts and figures available to us that Jonathan was going to win. So I headed to Buhari's headquarters with a camera in hand reporter. Every other reporter, local international, to hear Buhari accept his uh, uh, his, his uh, election victory. They were expecting him to make a victory speech. I got there, people who knew me swarmed around me, praising Sahara reporters for reporting the election results accurately. Those were young people. Some of them were reporters out of excitement. I was the one who personally put the video out. There was nothing in the video of me jubilating over Bihari. If I was jubilating, I would have been in company of APC big guns. You know, and in those days, the likes of Dino Melai, Akiku, Saraki, Fayemi, all of them were throwing themselves on the floor. I wasn't in their midst because I wasn't part of APC. I was covering the election. When they announced the inauguration, I also came. I didn't only come, I came with the retinue of reporters. I think you were there too. You came all the way from Lagos. And it was, in fact, the most notable thing that happened during the inauguration wasn't even in Buhari's inauguration. It was that we confronted Mugabe. Robert Mugabe. I remember. Yes. I was there. Yes. <laughs> and asked him, when are you doing election in your country? So my interest was in Buhari. And when I left the inauguration, I granted an interview to Punch. Punch newspaper, you can Google it. Stating, this was before Buhari even started doing anything. But I said, based on my observation of the Buhari regime, these guys are not ready for governance. Google it. So if I was working for them, how could I write them off when they had not even started? I also granted an interview when I returned after coverage of the election, I was interviewed by Dr. Damages, Rudolph Okonko, where I stated with him that even though the elections were free and fair, these are places where we thought they messed with the election. These are, you know, this, this information is public. But you know what happened to all these people you are referring to? They had been told and made to believe that they would be able to present evidence that I supported Buhari. They were told that I was paid money 
they, 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 they discover that it's not true. They were told that I was going to Tinubu's house and I have a relationship with Tinubu. I've challenged them, they couldn't provide the evidence. They were told that they were able to find an article I wrote. They went back to an article that an interview I granted that Jonathan was the worst president. And it remains my position that with the corruption that I covered under the Jonathan regime, it was the worst. At that time, there was information available. And it has been my experience that the last president of Nigeria is always, you know, the, the president that is current is always worse than the last one. That made it look like that Buhari now makes people like Buhari, uh, Babangida look like a saint. Buhari makes Jonathan look like a saint. Even though today, monies are still being recovered from Jonathan's wife in dollars that they stole. The jewelry they found in Desiani's house is worth $40 million. Not Naira. Jets. These are things I covered. The arm Sega. And the person they referred to who brought out the video is working for Atiku. I was Atiku, not one of the people that gave Buhari, Buhari money. Gave him a jet for the election. So when people okay, can't that, find anything, can they can can engage me the Permit me to quickly. No, just, I wasn't uh, celebrating even at that place. There was just young people who saw me. Ah, this is. I this, it happens to me tomorrow. It happened to me to tomorrow. Like if I go out, even in this my Abuja arrest, and I go out, I see people. People come around and celebrate me, you know, and I appreciate that. I don't walk away from them. I don't snub them because there's that's the, how they want to express how they feel about me. Even inside DSS detention, I have fans, <laughs> you know. When I'm walking on the corridor from uh, detention to go and pick food, they will be shouting revolution now, revolution now, hoping that they are guys. DSS yes, officials. Yes. <laughs> so, we have to explain, but I want to be very clear that I wasn't celebrating Buhari's election. I don't know. If I wanted to celebrate Buhari's election, I would have gone to Buhari's house, you know, that night. Like every other person. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Never please. met Buhari in my life. We were together in Abuja. They would have happily taken me to him. Even when he won the election, when he came to the U.S. for the first time to come to the U.N., mm -hmm. this claim, I, I don't talk to him, they told that he requested to see me. I told them I'm not interested in seeing Buhari. I don't, because it will be misinterpreted that he thanked me personally. And there will be a picture of me and him splashed all over the world that, oh, you know, he gave you red money after he helped him win. I've never met Buhari before. What I did was to send our reporters to go and meet him. Dr. Damages was working with me at that time at that dollar. And they went to him and they interviewed him. It's on uh, YouTube. Um, when they arrived at the place, I also had the guy who was working with us, Doc Declan. They gave them $1,500. And they, they were like, are you crazy? We are Sahara reporters. We don't collect money. And I also oh, remember the time yes. when I was part of the crew that went to cover the uh, APC primary election in 2014 into 2015. You were clear telling us on phone every time. Yes. Please understand that I don't have any personal emotional attachment with these people. Just do your call and, and leave. Even, don't even take, don't take even their water. You always yes. reminded us, don't take even their water. Don't collect right. anything, even their water. Don't collect it. That's right. I also and remember I you always told us then when I was freelancing with Sarah Reporters that um, and, uh, anytime we said, oh, we want to go and do a documentary somewhere. We just need this transport. You say, hold on, I don't have the money now. When I have, I'll call you. Or if That's you can't waste the money, just forget about it until we have. You have That's never right. allowed us to take even envelope. Until today, everywhere I go, people see me and say, ah, we know this one, know they collect money. Yeah, so... That record is there for the everybody. It's the official policy of organization because you can't have it both ways. And I've always explained this to those of you who are fairly close. You can't, you can't, be, you can't be hanging out with criminals. Hmm. And expect to be reporting on them. You know, they will out you one day. You will offend them to the point that they will be intolerant of you, and they will tell the whole world that you are not what you claim to be. If I had any hidden 
skeletons in the cupboard. When I was arrested, they would have pushed it out. Even if it's true third parties. We well, had enough enemies out there who just want to hear something negative about me. Even when they couldn't find negative things to hear to say about me. Some of them tried to mock you know. Um, there was a pastor, uh, Suleiman, Apostle Suleiman, who was mocking that uh, if I had not offended him, he would have uh, stood for me as a you. short mm. You know, until I, I sent a message from detention that they should tell him to, uh, right. to yeah, uh, to, to, to stop the short ship where there's no sunshine in his ass. So, you know, I, so I, I, there are people. But who, I'm wondering that, where do you think all these things are coming from? Because those of us that know you, know, know, one, know that you know they do all these things. It, but, it doesn't matter, but look, you know, let me explain to you. You can't have, you can't have. My leg, you can't get involved. There's nothing. Let me let me say, let me just reverse and say, there's no major event that's happened in this country in the last 30 years that I wasn't part of the pro democracy movement, the student movement, the environmental movement, the media movement that brought that made the internet very difficult for you know our leaders. So, you can't, you can't do all of these things just one person and not have enemies. And there are people who want to directly interpret even your good deeds as bad. It's not. It's not possible, you know. Again, who are the most important? Uh, who are the most important uh, characters in the in our religious sector in Nigeria? Muhammad and Jesus Christ, right? They were persecuted. Jesus was persecuted to the point that they put a thief be beside him, and the people said, "Give us the thief, you know, Barabbas, right?" To so kill Jesus. Muhammad was persecuted, was driven from Mecca to Medina because he stood against the authority at that time. But you know, doing Black Lives Matter, you know, and by the way, I'm just using all this because I know majority of our people are religious. I don't need to repeat to you that I'm not. Uh, so during Black Lives Matter, the daughter of Martin Luther King said something when everybody was praising Martin Luther King, and he said, she said it's on Twitter, I was screenshotting and I think I posted it, he said, people don't always like my dad when he was around. You know, Martin Luther King was stabbed at a bookstore, I think in, uh, in New York, by a black person, even though they claim that she's mentally deranged. He was then eventually killed. But now he's celebrated and we've forgotten all his flaws. And, you know, as Mandela once said, he said, you know, if you are looking for uh, a saint, don't look in my direction. But if you are looking for somebody who is aspiring uh, not to be a sinner, maybe uh, you can look in my direction. But that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying here is that, is it possible for someone to have done what I did uh, for 30 years? I'm not that and not have enemies, even dead old babies have enemies. 